All right, we started the show honoring Reed's wish of talking Masters odds. Now we'll do it on the fantasy side. Our panel now consisting of Jeff Rolwick and Reed T. Fowler and RotoWire senior golf writer uh, Len Hochberg. You guys tell me right now as we do some PGA Tour price check, are the golfers worth their salaries for the Masters? Len, I'll just ask you this one about Tiger's 8500 uh, bucks. I mean, if you can take, like, the emotion out of this thing, do you believe he's a good DFS play at this price? Uh, I, I think if we took the emotion out of this, uh, then Tiger Woods would not be $8,500. The emotion is in it. Uh, I'm guessing maybe he'd be $7,700 without the emotion. Uh, but it is what it is, $8,500. When I put out my rankings last week before all of this at, uh, going on at Augusta, I had him making the cut. I do not see much more of that happening. Um you know, I just think that, that come Sunday on CBS, when they come on on Sunday afternoon, Tiger will be done for the day. We will see highlights, of course. We will not see live shots of Tiger Woods. And I think Jeff's lower back will remain safe <laughs> for another year. All right. Well, Ulrich, his good buddy Justin Thomas is is 10-3 here. And listen, the, the winner at Augusta the past decade, the champion, is ranked inside the top 25 in the world. So it feels like those fluke winners, like those years, are at least gone right now. But is JT worth paying up for? Yeah, JT is definitely worth paying up for. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of people are, are targeting Justin Thomas this week. And the, the fact that he manned up as one of the most popular plays uh, of, of, on DraftKings. Uh, I mean, this is a player who's gained strokes on approach in 12 straight events. He said himself he feels very close. He's got experience at Augusta, and I think he's actually a little bit underpriced compared to just the recent form that he's coming in. I mean, I get Dustin Johnson's a past winner, and he's looked okay, but Justin Thomas's body of work uh, over the last few months is, is, is just better. It's quite frankly, it's better than John Rahm's probably too. So uh, Justin Thomas at 10-3, I, I think if anything, he's just slightly underpriced this week, and I think a lot of people are keying up on that. And also with the fact that, you know, the recent form, the strokes gained uh, approach or, or around the green, excuse me, has been good lately too. So Justin Thomas, uh, if anything, to me, just uh, slightly underpriced this week. Yeah, dude, I, where was it? I saw the stat. So stroke, strokes game overall ranks first in this field in his last 24 rounds, Reed. You're really into the strokes game lately. And big, listen, I, I really dig how much of a stat guru. Big SG Thomas. guy right here. Big I, SG. I, and listen, I, I honestly, real talk, I learned from you two doing our show on like Wednesdays. I'm like, wait, this is kind of important. You know, that's why I'm back in Billy Ho this week. Go ahead, Reed. <laughs> yeah, by transitive property, he's back in Billy Horschel. So he's big into the quantitative. And then he takes some like gypsy stat of the transitive power of Tiger giving it to Billy Ho in the driving range. I so hate I you guys. The juxtaposition. But like I mean, look, Justin Thomas is fine. Like there's no, there's nothing against JT. But how about a case for Scotty Scheffler at the the most expensive at eleven thousand? It seems crazy. It seems like it should be not that, right? Like it shouldn't be eleven thousand for Scotty Scheffler. But I mean, we all know that he's won three in the last five events. But let's date back to what he's done in the four majors last year. His worst finish was at at the Masters, 18th. His other three were eight, seven, and eight. That was last year before this guy has been numbered, like before he ascended to number one in the entire world. No one's going to be playing Scotty Scheffler because they all think that it's too much, too expensive a price and look at all the guys below him. So I don't mind JT, but I'm going all the way to the top of DFS, Scotty Scheffler. All right, Len, where's JT on your radar? Well, I, I had him at sixth in my rankings and it scares me that he's that low. I did have Scheffler, Rom, Cam Smith, Spieth and Kepka. Uh, there's just not a left room in the top five for all these good golfers. Um, it would not surprise me if Justin Thomas wins the tournament. Granted, he has only one top 10 in six career Masters, which is a little bit troubling. But, um, you know, he, he's just too good to, to dismiss. And I think his price is right. All right, Reed, uh, let's see, seven dudes in the 10K range. Rory is the last one sitting there right at uh, 10K even. Um, it's the one spot, the one, the one major that has eluded him here, dude. So are you confident enough to roster him, thinking maybe this is, this is it? He gets over the hump, gets that monkey off his back. Yeah, I think Rory with any one of these guys is, is going to be a popular build this week because the narrative we all play narratives that's why we watch yep. this game that's why we love it that's why we play it is because we partly want to take into the narrative and why tiger woods is the most bet on golfer by 2x of the next person and Roy, Roy, Roy McElroy will always get that that sort of narrative bump look last year i tweeted this out 
He was 14.7% rostered last year, which was, I believe, second lowest or third lowest, right in the middle. And I think, and that was a price tag a little bit higher than this. So now you get a cheaper Rory. Jeff's already tweeted it out like three weeks ago that he's betting Rory McIlroy. Everybody and their mothers are playing Rory because this is his 14th or his 15th Masters. I can't remember which one. And he's now setting up very well for it. We saw a top 10 at, at the Genesis at Riviera, which is a good comp. And we know what he can do. If this course is going to play windy and it's going to play even longer because of the, 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 the forecast, and it's not going to play exactly wet because they have that heating system underneath the, <laughs> underneath the, the fairways and greens here, then Roy McIlroy is set up here. So there's nothing against Roy. It's just, you know, can he do it? All right, he's uh, getting to that mid-30s range now, Len. Eighth crack at completing his career Grand Slam in Augusta National. It just seems that something always seems to go wrong with Rory at Augusta. And he still might justify his $10,000 price with one of his famous backdoor top tens. Um, you know, he, he's Rory. He's pretty popular. But I just think there are a few guys on my list ahead of him. Uh, I would be thrilled to see him win. It would be fun for the sport, fun for golf, fun to talk about. But I just don't see it happening. Okay, Jeff, how about you, ma'am? No, I mean, look, I, I'm obviously like leading the Roy bandwagon this week. And, and I, honestly, I'm, I'm still pretty confident about this pick. I mean, three of Roy's last six wins have come after missed cuts. His big body of work over the last four or five months has been very good. The around the green game has been sharp. I think it's good that he missed the cut last week. I really do. I think the pressure is off Rory right now, and that's when he performs his best. And the only thing I disagree well with what Reed said is I, I don't think he's going to be that popular this week mm. at 10K. Mm. Uh, people put a lot of stock into trends and stuff like that, and, and the trends with Masters winners is they typically don't miss cuts coming in. I think that's got people off Rory. I think the fact Cam Smith and Jordan Spieth are less than him in the salary, and then the psychological point that he's right at 10K, and you've got all these elite names like Cantley, Shoffley, Spieth, Smith, under 10K – I, I, I think he's a great tournament play for the, for the Million Maker. He's going off late um, Thursday afternoon, which isn't going to be as windy as Friday afternoon. I, I'm, I'm betting Rory first round leader. I'm betting him outright. Um, I really think this is his year. Yeah, a couple Million Makers on there, everyone. Make sure you build your lineups for it. we got one minute left in show. Len, your pick to win the Masters. Preseason pick was Cameron Smith. The only thing that uh, makes me upset about Cameron Smith is he's winning too much. How many times can he win? Can he go players, his last start, and the Masters back-to-back? -back, but he's playing great, Cameron Smith. Yeah, Reed doesn't like him on the sportsbook side of things, <laughs> but who do you like in DFS to win the Masters? Let's go. Just win the Masters overall, Reed. Brooks Kepka. I mean, this guy is amazing. So Ooh. let's get let's get Brooksy with the green jacket. Dude, that would be hot. Speaking of hot, Jeff, bring us home. Roy McIlroy. Tiger Woods in the field. Ooh. Rory's going to put a sh put on a show for Tiger in his comeback year. Give, ah. give Rory his first green jacket. Rory's got to get a green jacket. I mean, it's just it would be a, a crime against humanity if he didn't get one for his no. career end.